This is Dreamy Bot Z10 Pro, a robot vacuum and mop that empties itself. It comes with a dust disposal base and a dust bag of 4,000 milliliters to store dust for up to two months. There are four suction levels to choose from on the app. Having a vacuum with the suction of 4,000 Pascal or work as quietly as 80 decibel is totally up to you. When the power is low, it recharges itself and resumes the cleanup. Hey everyone, Digital David here. Today in this video, I'm gonna be unboxing and reviewing the DreamyBot Z10 Pro Auto Empty Robot Vacuum and Mop. I did receive this product to review, but any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. You can see the nice retail box and packaging right here, walking us through some of the product features and tech specs. So this does feature that self-emptying base that can last and hold dirt and debris for up to 65 days. It has our LDS navigation right here. So we have that high precision 3D navigation thanks to that front sensor and the LiDAR navigation up top. So this can properly see and map your house. Don't forget this is a two in one combo. So we have a vacuum and a mop built into this device and we have 4,000 PA strong, strong, strong suction. Now let's go ahead, let's open it up and look at the package contents. Here are all the package contents. First up you can see we have our quick start guide walking us through the necessary steps to get everything up and running. Next, you can see we have our full user guide and manual walking us through safety instructions, product information. They give you a nice overview and a breakdown of each individual piece of technology on the RoboVac. We can learn more about maintenance, how to use it, how to prepare for setup and first use, QR code to download the Xiaomi Home app, all the different settings, again, the maintenance options, how to clean everything and take good care of your RoboVac in the whole system, status indicator light section, FAQ section. We have our specs as well. So it has a 5,200 milliamp hour battery charging time, approximately six hours. 46 watts is the rated power. Then we have our self-emptying base information as well too, model number RCS2. So you can learn more about that right there. And then we have the same uh, information repeated again in multiple languages. Next, you can see we have our power cord right here. Check that out for the self-emptying base. We have an extra bag as well too. Again, this is a one gallon bag, four liter dust bag. We already have one installed and they give us an additional one. You can see our side cleaning brush right here for the RoboVac. We also have our mopping module right here with removable mop cloth that we can wash and clean as needed. It just slides right out. You can see the little built-in wheel there. We can flip it over to the other side. You can see where we go ahead and put our water into the nice tank. So this is a 150 milliliter water tank. Then you can see we got the RoboVac itself right here with the beautiful gray finish with the Dreamy logo and branding up top, our LiDAR navigation module and our three button controls right there. And last but not least, you can see the Dreamy self-emptying base. Check that out. It's got a beautiful gray color and finish to match the RoboVac. Now let's go ahead, let's look at the RoboVac in more detail. So here's a look at the RoboVac up close. Again, you can see the LiDAR navigation module at the top, our three control buttons right there. We also have two pieces of foam to remove before use to protect the bumper during shipment. You can see the Dreamy logo and branding. We can go ahead, we can open up this cover to reveal our dust bin. This is a 400 milliliter dust bin and they have nice instructions for you right there. We can go ahead, let's take the dustbin out. You can see it up close. Here's our filter that's removable so we can clean and replace as needed. Here it is from the bottom side so you can see how it's gonna self empty through these two sides right here on the base. Here's where the vacuum's gonna suck in all the contents as it's moving around our house. Looks great and then we have this option so you can open it up to easily empty as well if you want to, but we have that self emptying base so we don't need to do that anymore. You can see the inside too with it removed. We can go ahead and gently press it back in place. You can see we have a nice cleaning tool for the main brush right there. And you can see we have a reset option and we have our Wi-Fi indicator light. So that's the top of the unit. 
let's look at it from the front. You can see from the front, we have our bumper. We also have our high precision 3D obstacle avoidance sensor right here. Look at that, pretty cool main unit. Here it is from the side. You can see it from the back side. Here's the other side. So you can see how that bumper works and operates. Now let's go ahead, let's look at it from the bottom. So you can see where we're gonna install the included side brush. You can see our charging contacts, our omnidirectional wheel. You can see our cliff sensors right here. This is how it's gonna be able to tell if it's coming up to maybe steps in a landing. It's not gonna fall down steps or anything like that thanks to the cliff sensor. It's gonna know when it leaves the ground. You can see the product information right here. Here's the main brush. We can go ahead, we can just gently remove that. You can see we can take the brush out as needed to clean. And then we can just gently work it back in place and then that snaps back in. You can see the two main drive wheels we have right here and the suspension that they have just spring loaded. Again, you can see where the self emptying base is gonna be able to extract the contents from our dustbin right here. And then you can see where we have our mopping module and how that's gonna attach. So we can take the module, just like you see here, it's just gonna slide right in place. There we go, just snaps in place and it's ready to be used. And then if we want to remove the module, you can see we have buttons right there and right there that we can then press and slide back out if we want to have the module removed. Now let's go ahead, let's take a look up close at that self-emptying base. So here's an up close look at the self-emptying base. I really like the finish of this. It's a pretty big base too. We have their logo and branding right here. We have an indicator light. You can see the charging contacts down below where the vacuum cleaner is gonna drive up on to recharge and to self-empty right there. That's gonna suck the contents out into the base. Here it is from this side. Let's flip it over to the other side. You can see that. Here it is from the back side where we have our power cord's gonna plug in down here and we have some nice cable management for us to really tidy things up. Now we can look at it from the bottom. So here it is from the bottom. You guys can see as we turn it around, we can learn more about this product and its information in regards to power ratings. Then you can see, we can actually see through, which is nice so we can probably tell if we ever get any clogs, but we can see the main channel right here that's gonna suck up all the debris for us. And then you can see again, there's the power plug and port right there for the included power cable. Now let's look at it from the top. So watch as we open it up. You can see on the inside right here, we have our nice included four liter or one gallon dust bag that's good for over two months of use. And they actually have the instructions right here at the top too for us. If we forget how to install everything or how it goes, you can just follow the nice built-in diagram right there. Really a nice base. I like the top lid a lot. I don't know if it's got a magnet on it, but it feels like it's spring loaded and just has a nice premium feel to it as it closes for us. So that's a quick look at the base. Now let's go ahead, let's get everything set up. So you can see we got the power cord installed right here. Now it's time to get the side brush installed. You can see where we're gonna attach the included side brush and you just gently press it in place until it snaps right in. And there you go, we now have the side brush installed. Now we're ready to go ahead, power everything on and set it up with the mobile app. The Mi Home app is available for iOS and Android devices. Once you have it downloaded and you sign in, you'll be at this home screen where you can see we can manage all of our devices. In this case, we already have two other Dreamy Vacs set up. Let's go ahead, let's add the new one. Select the plus icon in the top right hand corner. Then browse the category for your item. In this case, let's go to home appliance and you can see we have to find the DreamyBot Z10 Pro, which is near the top right hand corner under the Robo Vacuum section. Let's select that. Now we have to reset the device by holding down both the home button and the spot button for a couple of seconds. So there we go, it says waiting for the network configuration and we have a slow flashing light up here. We could also open it up and see that the Wi-Fi light is giving us a slow flash as well. So let's go ahead, let's confirm. So we have to select confirm operation, next. Now we need to connect to our Wi-Fi network. Make sure you're connected to a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi network. Enter your network information, then select next. 
Now you can see we need to connect to the Robovax own Wi-Fi network. So go to your Wi-Fi settings and connect to the Dreamy Vacuum. You can see the Dreamy Vacuum right here in our network settings. Go ahead, select that. Then it will prompt us to go back to the Miho map. Robot and phone connected. Please return to app to wait for the result. So now we're back in the app waiting for the device to finish setting everything up by connecting to our network. There we go, everything was set up successfully. Now it's taking us into the next page where we can choose our settings for the vacuum. Then we can select next. We can choose to rename the device if we want. Select next. There we go, everything's set up. Now we can share the vacuum if we want with our friends or family members. Now we can choose let's get started. And you can see, we can accept the terms. It's gonna walk us through how to organize our house, how to set up the charging dock. We can learn about resume cleaning and do not disturb if we wanna turn those modes on. Then we can learn about the cleanup process here. And you can see the logical cleaning patterns that the Robovac is gonna be able to do. It's smart enough to really understand the house. We can learn about no-go zones. And now you can see this is the main section of our Dreamy Bot Z10 Pro with all the different settings we can control. So let's go ahead, let's dive in to all these settings and look at everything we're able to change and tweak. So first up in the top right hand corner, select the three dots. This is going to take us to our main settings page where we can view our device settings right here. We can change the time zone. We can turn 3D obstacle avoidance on or off. We can adjust the voice and volume right here. You can choose your language. Then we can turn notifications on or off, carpet boost, we can turn that on or off, child lock, resume cleaning mode, do not disturb mode, we can set the start time and end time. We can also turn on mop cleaning. According to your needs, you can set the way your robot returns to the base for self cleaning if you want. So we could do that right there. And you can see the different options we have for the mop cleaning settings. And we can go back, you can see our auto empty settings, automatic dust collecting, we can turn it on or off after one, two or three tasks. So you can adjust the frequency. And you can see we have our schedule clean up right here. So we can load our schedule and we can set a new schedule. So no set schedule set right now, but we can go ahead, we can do that. We can adjust by room if we want, start time, how often we want it to repeat, which days of the week the cleaning mode, what suction setting do you want? And then do you want the mop water flow settings, low, medium, or high with that? Then we can go back, you can view our cleaning history. Once we have data to populate after we use it, you can see that right there. Then you can see we have a nice breakdown of our accessory usage, how long everything's gonna last when you need to service or replace. So let's just select one for a second so you can see. We can also reset it as needed with the approximate 150 hours for the filter for its lifespan. Then you can see remote control so we can manually drive the RoboVac within the app right here. And we can locate the RoboVac. I am here. And it just gives it a, an audible prompt letting us know where it's at. And we can view some general settings like the device name, location management. We want to share the device right here. We can do that. Firmware update, intelligent scenes as well too. If we wanna do any sort of home automation if we're building out our Mi Home App smart products. Help and feedback, we have more settings right here too you can view. And then we can delete the devices needed. And we can go back into the main app right here with our different rooms all in zones. But right now since we haven't used it, let's come back into the app after we finished our first clean and then we can go over the map settings. So now that we finished our first clean, let's go ahead, let's look at the results. So first up, I have the mopping module right here. You can see how much water we have left in the tank. So for my first main floor where this will be running, we're only able to get one full mop with this before we'd have to refill. Your results may vary depending on the size of your area that you're cleaning with the RoboVac. Now, I purposely did not have it suck up the contents of the vacuum yet. I wanted to be able to look at them with you guys so you can see what it's capable of sucking up. And then we'll try out the self-emptying feature here in a minute. So it feels very full already. So let's go ahead, let's open it up. Check that out. Look at all 
the pet hair, humid hair. We have dirt, dust, and debris. So we have a lot of fine dust and dirt particles you can see in there and a bunch of crumbs as well. So great for pet hair, human hair, and all the typical household contents you'd have. So in my house, it's two adults, one, one and a half year old, and a dog. So you can see very, very dirty house. That's just one time through. And I actually have a RoboVac running every night. So I had it turned off yesterday. So this one could run today and that's what it was able to pick up. So a bunch of crumbs, bunch of hair, all the typical stuff you can expect around your house. Let's go ahead, let's put that back in and let's flip it over to the bottom side. So here's the main brush. You can see it does have some of that shag rug on it already, those carpet fibers right here. That's why I don't like to have RoboVax run on that rug because it sheds so much. This is after just one pass right there. You can see we already have some of that shag rug tangled up in here. Obviously it's still functional, but I like to have this as clean as possible so we can use the included tool to remove the rest of those fibers. Now let's go ahead, let's look back at the mobile app to see what everything looks like with a populated map. So now we're back in the mobile app. You can see we have the full map populated right here of my main floor where the vacuum was cleaning and mopping. So you can see how everything looks right here. Look at how detailed it is. So all those little dots and circles around there, that's the kitchen table and chair legs. Right here you can see that's my baby's high chair. And then you can see those logical cleaning patterns. So again, first it's gonna map the room, go around all the perimeter edges. And then you can see it's gonna zigzag back and forth. And that's how it's gonna provide you with that nice, consistent and constant clean, which is very thorough and detailed. Then you can see right here, that's where the shag rug is. We have a big ottoman and sectional sofa. And this is an area I don't want it to go with over there. So there's an ottoman and a chair. So everything looks great. Same with over here, there's a big shag rug. This is where my daughter has all of her play toys. So it was able to map some of that too right there and the shag rug kept it from going up on it's a pretty pretty thick one so looks great the map's very detailed and thorough this is all of them then we can uh view by room and do a room clean and then we can choose how many times we want to clean the room one or two times or we can choose a zone so you can just pick a zone throughout the house and how many times you want it to be cleaned you can do that right there you can see the breakdown of our cleaning area how long it took to clean and the battery percentage that's left then we have some map management features at the bottom i want to show you this really quickly this does support multi-floor mapping so say you have a basement a first story second story whatever you have you can take it to different areas and choose the map accordingly just make sure you turn multi-floor mapping on and then we can add a new map Pretty cool, great feature. Definitely want to get one of those on the market today. Look for a RoboVac that has that feature. LiDAR helps with that mapping too. Thanks to the great navigation features we have, we're able to build out all those extra mapping features that we get with this one, like the no-go zone. So we can set a no-go zone right here. So we have a virtual wall. So you can see we can drag and drop that in place. We have our no-go zones in regards to where you might not want it to vacuum. So we have that, and then we have a no mop zone. So if you don't want to mop, maybe there's a little uh, you know, rug on the floor right there, something like that, a runner, you can do that. Maybe you got a carpeted section, you still want it to clean but not mop. You could just drop that wherever you need it and you can add multiples of each of those depending on the environment that you have around your house. So very nice to have those advanced features, they're fantastic. No other accessories needed, just drag and drop on the map and you're all set and ready to go right there. Then you can see we have our cleaning mode options. So we have our different suction settings and our different water flow settings. So we can adjust that as desired. I prefer the high for the water flow settings. I think it gives the best results. And then you can see we have our dock option right here. So to that's gonna to make charge. it return to home, but you can see we're, we're already at home. So let's just have it stop right there. But you can see a lot of great options right there, full controls that we have. Now let's go ahead, let's set this up to self empty so we can see that process and see how much is left in the dustbin. And let's go over the suction settings in more detail. So select the three dots in the top right hand corner, then choose auto empty settings. You can see currently we have automatic dust collecting turned off, but I highly recommend keeping that enabled. Now let's go ahead, let's manually start 
a self empty. So just select the big blue button. And now it's going to start. Start auto empty. So there we go. It's really a quick process. Now let's go ahead. Let's look at the dustbin contents and see what we have left. And in this case, I can still see some pet hair right here. So it does look like we weren't able to get all the contents out yet. So let's go ahead. Let's try it one more time and see if repositioning that makes any difference. So let's select the blue button again and watch it empty. Start auto empty. All right, let's go ahead, let's open it up again. And sure enough, you can see there is nothing left inside of here. So I probably screwed it up when I initially showed you guys what the contents were in there. But obviously, if you have some leftovers in there after the first time running through, you can definitely just do it again on your own if you want. But very powerful, is able to suck up all of that pet hair into the canister. And now it's ready to go again with a nice empty base. Now we can look at the different suction settings. This is the quiet suction setting. Here's standard. And you can hear a slight increase in noise and power. Here's strong. Same thing. And then here's turbo. So that's the loudest and most powerful suction setting and how it's gonna sound. And now just for fun, let's go to the quietest setting again. So it's a pretty big difference depending on what you're looking to do. Maybe your floor is really dirty. Maybe you wanna watch TV and have it run at the same time. So you have a bunch of different options depending on your environment. So when you start the RoboVac for the first clean, it will make its way around the room, creating a nice perimeter and map for you before it begins its logical clean. Now you can see that logical cleaning pattern in motion right here. So it's just gonna go zigzag back and forth, perfectly in alignment with its last sweep with a nice overlap in between and following that logical pattern as it cleans all throughout the house. Now you can see how the RoboVac's able to navigate table and chairs and obstacles like this. It's able to drive right through them to give us a nice thorough and deep clean. It's able to navigate right around the chair legs, go underneath the chair, and then make its way back out. So you can see it's entering under that chair right there. It's a tight squeeze, but it is able to get under there. It will work its way back out eventually as it cleans all underneath there. So it does a really good job navigating difficult obstacles without getting stuck thanks to all of its sensors, how it can really see and process all the unique obstacles you have around your house. Watch as the RoboVac's able to handle changing surfaces. You can see it can very easily transition between the hard surface and the rug right here with no issues at all. It can drive partially between the two without getting stuck. It can make its turns up or below with no issues as it navigates different surfaces. So let's go ahead, let's see right here how it's gonna navigate in between the shoes and the rug. And again, no issues at all right there. It's able to clean both very effectively and not have any issues as it motors between the two. So here it is back on the hard surface. There it is back up on the rug with no issues. Now we can turn around right here See if we can get it stuck. But again, we're making our turn half on, half off the rug, and it has no issues at all going forward, doing the turns, or anything else, regardless of the surface that it's on. So now we have the RoboVac at the top of the steps. Let's see if those cliff sensors really work. So we're gonna try to drive the RoboVac off the steps right here, and you can see it's smart enough to sense that it's at the top of the step and it's unable to go any further, which is really nice. So those sensors are great if you have a lot of steps or stairs or changes in elevation 
where you don't want the RoboVac to go. The cliff sensors are smart enough to be able to sense where it's at and to not proceed any further. Now we can see how the RoboVac performs on the most difficult shag rug in my house. This is a tough obstacle that I always set as a no-go zone for RoboVacs, but I want to show you guys that it is capable of driving on different terrains. And depending on your shag rug, how thick it is, it might actually be able to clean it without getting stuck. This rug though is a no-go zone for me in my house, but we're gonna drive it up on the rug so you guys can see what it's like. So here we go, it is able to make its way up on the rug with a little bit of a hesitation there, but typically it doesn't have any issues. And now you can see as I try to turn the vacuum, it's already having some difficulty responding to the commands. And now we can drive it back this way. So again, it's having some difficulties. The rug just throws, you know, the sensors into confusion and it clogs the main brush. And you can see it's having a hard time. I'm trying to drive it forward and just for some reason, it's getting stuck on just the thick threads right there. So that's about what you'd expect. After a while, the RoboVac just might give up. Not a big deal for me. This is a no-go zone that's easy to clean, but just keep that in mind depending on the rugs you have around your house. Something like this is gonna provide a lot of difficulty and resistance to whatever RoboVac you end up getting. Now you can see the RoboVac cleaning on carpet right here with no issues. It's doing a great job as it cleans this area right here. So you can see no issues there in performance. It's doing a nice job. It's leaving a nice line too as it cleans. So no resistance with the carpet. It's able to navigate just fine and clean the area. We'll keep watching it for a second. You can see it's just able to go back and forth. No issues at all. And don't forget, you can also use the carpet boost setting within the app as well. If you have a lot of carpet in your house and that's where it's gonna continually clean, you'll definitely want to use that feature. So here we go, we have carpet boost enabled now. So we have the max suction settings for the RoboVac right here as it's clean in the carpet. Now we have the mopping module installed. So we have the highest water setting as well too for it. Keep in mind with the mopping module, it's the equivalent to just having a damp cloth or paper towel and wiping your floor. There's no scrubbing, there's no detergent or cleaner used. So you can expect a similar experience to just gently wiping your floors with a damp cloth. That's the sort of clean that this two-in-one RoboVac will provide. So unfortunately, it won't replace you having to scrub your floors for those hard to reach stains or really set in spots of dirt. But if you do wanna have just a nice clean floor overall with just the typical stuff you'd bring in maybe from some wet shoes, a pet, a kid, it's gonna make your floors look a lot better than if they weren't wiped down at all. So that's really what this mop is capable of doing. Again, we have the highest water setting right now. That's the one that I always recommend because your first initial couple of minutes of the RoboVac working is gonna give you the best results because eventually the pad will start to dry out some from the original dampness that you get everything wet when you fill it up. So just keep that in mind, put it in the most effective areas, maybe do a spot clean if you're concerned about you know, a certain spot around the house that looks a little bit dirtier. You can always do a spot clean there. And then if not, you'll have enough water to get one or two cleans in, depending on how large of an area your vacuum has to cover. Maybe you can get three or four too if you have a smaller space. But it does a really nice job just gently wiping your floors down and they look a lot better than if you didn't do anything. So now we're getting up close to the floors that were just mopped. So you can see it's still wet, but it's drying right here. And I wanted to show you guys an area where it didn't clean. So you can see the stains on the floor and what it's gonna look like before the mop goes through. But here's a piece of floor that's already started to dry and you can see the big difference between the two right there. This section's been mopped. 
this section has not been mopped. So that's the sort of cleaning this mop is capable of doing on a floor. So let me show you my final thoughts after using the Z10 Pro. First, I wanna say I've been waiting months for Dreamy to finally release a self-emptying base. I use the D9 daily. I also have the L10 Pro. The L10 Pro is basically the same as the D9, but it has the same 3D sensor on the front of the Z10 Pro. But now we have a self-emptying base and it, it's fantastic. It's everything that I wanted. And we get 65 days before we have to empty this. So now instead of every one or two cleans, emptying the dustbin, we can just let it do its thing. So for me, I let mine run at night. And now I really, really, really don't have to think about it, which is top notch. I don't know what else you could ask for. We got the self-emptying base. We got the two-in-one mop and we have LiDAR navigation. So this can really see and process the room. We have multi-level mapping, the virtual walls, no-go zones, no mop zones. Very pleased with this unit. This will be my main unit now. And I'm just so excited to finally have the self emptying base. Keep in mind, whatever vacuum cleaner you are in the market for, if you're getting a RoboVac, I think the best feature by far, the one that is worth paying for is LiDAR navigation. That just unlocks a much more thorough clean all around your house. The vacuum cleaner can see and process things better and it's really a worthwhile upgrade. This is just a bonus to have the self-emptying base, but once you get into the RoboVac game, this is definitely the logical conclusion in what you'll be wanting to have. So you could go ahead and just get everything now and make it a clean sweep, or you can work your way up to that in the future with a different model or upgrading to this someday. But anyways, this is really a nice feature. Love having it. Now I don't have to worry about emptying the dustbin and it's just so cool. Now, after singing all of its praises, what do I want to see improved in the future? Well, there's a couple of things specific to this model. The first one is I couldn't get it to work with Amazon Alexa. I could have swore I had my other one set up with the Mi Home app and I integrated them, but I can't figure it out anymore. I'm not sure if that's just because this vacuum isn't released yet at the time of me filming this video or if it's waiting on an update or what's going on there but I don't even use voice control anyway. So for me, it's not a deal breaker and it's not something I care about. I just set up the schedule and then I forget about it. And now I really forget about it for at least two months. And then I got to remember to empty the um, vacuum bag out of there. So I'd like to see maybe some voice control integrations in the future, especially for people that like to use that. It'd be cool not only to be able to turn it on and off, but also to be able to make it go to different rooms or just mop or just vacuum or adjust the suction level, that sort of thing. Other than that, I'd like to see a mopping module improvement. This has to be probably industry wide, but I'd like to see the mopping module, maybe have some harder bristles, a scrub brush would be really cool somehow. I don't know if that's possible, but it'd be awesome if we had maybe a scrub brush or something with the main brush where we could actually get maybe some scrubbing action to really mop and clean our floors as opposed to just wiping them. But overall, from the looks of this, I'm very pleased with it. I love the gray color. That's my favorite color I've seen in a robot.